What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's quick sensor tutorial for beginners, we'll be showing you how to get started with the BME280 pressure, temperature, and humidity sensor with the Raspberry Pi. In this case, we'll be using the Raspberry Pi 4B, but really you can use just about any Raspberry Pi model. The Pico and Pico W won't work for this version of the video, but we do have another video where we talk about how to set up the Pico and Pico W with the BME280, and you can go ahead and watch that. So if you want to get started with the BME280 with the Raspberry Pi, you just want to set up the connections as we see here in this diagram. So you only need four jumper wires, and those jumper wires will allow you to connect to the Raspberry Pi from the BME280. And of course, the BME280 has to be pre-soldered. You can buy the BME280 pre-soldered at Shilatech. And once you have those four connections, be sure not to mix up the ground and the VCC connection or the VIN connection, that is the powered ground because that can cause some damage to your electronics. Now, other than that, you can see in the green and the blue there, that is the respective SDA and SCL pins, which are required for I squared C communication. So just a total of four jumper wires, a Raspberry Pi model, in this case, as we mentioned, the 4B, and a soldered BME280, and that's all you need for the physical setup. So now that we have the physical setup and our devices plugged in, we could jump into the Python code and show you what you need to get set up in terms of the environment and walk through the code itself. Okay, so now that we have our physical setup, you just want to go into a terminal on your Raspberry Pi and you want to run the pip command to pip install the third party packages we need for the code we're going to run today. So you could just go ahead and run this command and click enter. It will take a while if it's your first time pip installing these packages. For me, it took more than 10 minutes, believe it or not. So if it is stalling, do not be alarmed, just let it be and eventually it will finish. So now that you have it pip installed, next thing you want to do is just create a Python file. I'm using Thani as my editor, which came with the Raspberry Pi, but really you can use any editor and you can name the file whatever you want. And so the first thing what we're doing in this code is we're just importing the respective libraries so once again, the SMBus2 library, which is used for I squared C communication, the BME280 library for interfacing with the BME280 sensor very easily, the time for time related functions, and the matplotlib, which is the most popular plotting library for Python. And of course, uh, date time, which we can use to add a date time to the timestamps for our sensor. So next thing that we have in this code is this initial part where we do some things with I squared C. So simply we are just setting the I squared C address of the BME280 and we're initializing the I squared C bus with SM bus two. And we are also initiating the BME280 object by loading the, the bus and the address. So now that we have that, the next thing we want to initialize is a list of values that we're going to use for our plots. So the list we have are the timestamps, the temperature in degrees Celsius, the humidity values, and the pressure values. These are all the values that the library gives us from the BME280 object that we created. And so next thing we want to do is we want to set this running variable equal to true. This is just to explicitly show that we are running this while loop forever. Really, you could just write true here, and that will be fine. Next thing we are doing is we are initializing the plot in Python. So we're not gonna get too much into matplotlib. This is just a very simple way to plot three uh, subgraphs or subplots in interactive mode. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. And we are just setting up the subtitles and we are just setting up the size. And of course we are setting the labels for our graph as you could see in lines 31 to 33. And next we are doing the good stuff here. We, we are running the while loop and we are starting to get BME280 values by running the sample method on the BME280 object, as you could see there. And then what we're doing is we are passing in the bus, the address and the calibration parameters, which we set already. And once we have that, it gives us those values in that specific point of time. Okay, so we're doing this every second in this code. So we're just, you can change the parameter based on uh, the sleep here. You can, you can update faster if you'd like. And then next thing what we're doing is we're just appending those values to the respective list. So timestamp to timestamp list, temperature to temperature list, humidity to humidity list, and pressure to pressure list. And we're just going to loop through those values and we are just going to plot them every second. So we're just going to clear the plot and replot it once we get uh, new values to that list. And we are uh, adding a legend to the plot and we're setting a Y label as well. And of course, down here, what we're doing, we are doing some 
just some making the graph look a little nicer by rotating the x values by uh, 45 degrees. So that allows us to uh, have more visual improvements with a dynamic time graph. So that, that is good practice to do. And finally down here, we just simply have some exception handling. And once the code is off, which it shouldn't turn off, um, we pretty much just close the plot at the end. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this code and show you what it gets. So give it a brief moment there. And we can see we have running there just to show us that everything is running just fine. And we are getting values in real time here for uh, temperature and degrees Celsius, humidity and pressure. It is not that zoomed in. Let me actually try to zoom it in here. Let's see if I could double click and open that. Yeah, it's not very responsive for some reason, but I hope you got the gist of it. You should be able to drag and you should be able to play with the properties of the matplotlib object to make the graph look as you like. And of course you can extend this work to much more intricate examples where you can have this in a web app and do other complicated things with the BMUT80 for uh, some real life applications. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, if you are watching this on, on YouTube, I hope you subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. Stay tuned, thanks for watching and take it easy. Thank you.